In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use GoPro Studio's keyframes to add cool visual effects to your video. It's an often overlooked button of GoPro Studio, but it's an easy way to add some really cool visual effects. In this stationary time lapse, for example, I created a slow left to right movement by using framing controls. And in the next clip, I used image controls to start out in black and white and slowly fade in color. So let me show you what keyframes are all about. So you might be wondering what a keyframe is. Well, a keyframe is just a marker at the beginning and at the end of a transition to create a smooth transition between one set of settings and another. In step two of GoPro Studio, the keyframes can be added for white balance, image, and framing. And you'll see here, this is the first keyframe in framing for a time lapse. And if I skip to the last keyframe, you'll see that it shifts over to the right side of the frame. So the transition will be from the left side of the frame in the first keyframe to the right side of the frame in the last keyframe. And it'll slowly transition throughout the video. I'm just gonna cover how to use keyframes in the image and framing controls, since those are probably the most useful for some cool effects. But you can also use it for white balance. But once you learn how to do it in the other two controls, you'll know how to do it in white balance also. So first I'm gonna show you how to use keyframes under framing controls on the right side here of GoPro Studio. I'm in step two of GoPro Studio. And I've already brought my time lapse in and done color corrections on it to get the colors I want. Using the keyframes with framing controls is really useful for time lapses. I shot this with the Hero 4 Black, but you can do this with any of the Hero cameras because there's the extra resolution in the photos to be able to zoom in and create movement in your time lapses. And even though I took this time lapse as a stationary time lapse, you're able to add movement by using the keyframes. So I'm just going to drag the clip down into the storyboard here. Then I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, 4 by 3 to wide. I'm going to conform it so that I get more of the top to bottom height of the video. So down here in the presets, I'm going to go by 4 to, th 4 to 3 to wide. And that way I won't lose as much top to bottom height when I zoom in on the video. Now here's where I'm going to start adding the keyframes for the framing controls. I'm in the beginning of the clip here, and I'm going to add a new keyframe. Right here is the keyframes box, and I'm going to push the plus sign. And that adds a new keyframe. So now it's going to make a marker of the settings that I make in the framing controls right here. Now I'm going to zoom in here. This picture is 4,000 pixels wide, and I'm only going to be exporting a 1080p file, which is 1920 pixels wide. So I have lots of room to zoom in, and that'll allow me to create the movement from left to right. So I zoomed in, and I want to move the picture up a little bit to get this reflective sand right here in the frame. So I'm just going to adjust the vertical framing. And now I'm going to begin the left to right movement. So I'm going to move this horizontal slider over so it catches the left side of the picture. You just want to make sure you don't go too far that the left side of the image becomes black here. So you can just slide it to see where that edge is. You can see that it's catching there. And I'm happy with that framing right there. So now I'm going to move to the end of the clip by pushing this icon right here. Move to the end of the clip and I'm going to add a new keyframe. So I'm going to go here where it says keyframes and click the plus sign. And now the dialog is open again and I can make more adjustments on this side of the image. I'm going to keep the same zoom and the same vertical framing. I'm just going to shift the picture over to the other side of it. So I'm going to shift the horizontal slider here. Click here and it shifts to the other side. And now it's going to be moving from left to right as the video plays. Now you'll see if I go from one keyframe to the next, it starts out on the left here and it goes to the right. That'll create the movement as it plays and slowly transitions from the first keyframe to the last. And that's all it is. Now if you go to the beginning of your video and you push play, it's going to slowly move from left to right. You can also create keyframes right in the middle. You don't just need to go from the beginning to the end. If you wanted to move it to the middle of your frame somewhere, add a new keyframe and say zoom out for example. You could do that and then it would zoom back into the last keyframe. So then it would go from the first keyframe, zoomed out a little, and then to the last keyframe, zoom back in at the right side of the frame. When using keyframes under image controls, you can adjust exposure, contrast, saturation, and sharpness. So you can create effects such as fading from black and white to color, or from regular exposure to black, or regular exposure to white to end your clips or introduce your clips. 
In this clip, when I showed it in the intro, I started out in black and white, and then I brought back in the color. So to do that, I added a keyframe in the beginning here by clicking on the plus sign, and then pulling out all of the saturation, and that makes it black and white. And you can add in a little bit of contrast, just to make it a little more artsy if you want. And then move a little further into the clip, and bring back in the color. So I'm going to move it in right here, like where I start to see right inside the barrel, and add another keyframe here. Then I'm going to bring back the color where it was, it was about at this marker, and bring the contrast back down a little bit. And now it's going to fade from black and white to color as it plays. So it's going to start on black and white and come back into color. And then at the end here I'll show you how to fade it to black. So I'm just going to add a keyframe here. and I'm going to keep it what it's at, where it's got full color, full saturation. And then I'm going to move to the end of the clip by clicking this little arrow. And then I'm going to add another keyframe here at the end of the clip. you got to remember to push the plus here at the keyframes so that you can adjust these controls again because they'll be locked from the last keyframe. So I'm just going to bring the exposure way down to black, almost black, so it fades to almost black as the clip ends. So then it'll go from like this and fade to black. The closer together the frames are, the quicker the transition will be, and the further apart the frames are, obviously the longer the transition will be. So in this clip I added four keyframes, one at the beginning, then it comes back into color, stays in color, and fades back to black right here at the end. You can start your video out blurry and bring it into focus. Just add a keyframe in the beginning, bring the sharpness all the way down, it'll bring, make your image blurry. Push play to wherever you want to bring the focus back. I'm going to bring it back into full focus right there. Add another keyframe and bring the sharpness back up to wherever you like it. Now when you play your video, it'll start out blurry and come into focus. You can also reset your keyframes at any point by just clicking the reset button here and remove all the keyframes. If you want to bring a single still photo into your video and you want to use framing controls on it, you can't actually do it because it's only one frame, but there is a way to do it. You just need to click on the still photo and slow the speed down so that it lasts longer. And make sure that flux is not clicked because you don't need that right now. And then just export your still image as a video. And choose Preset Archive here. And give it a title. And if you're exporting a large file, like a full-size image, 4,000 by 3,000 pixels, like this one is, unless your computer is able to export 4K, you might have a problem exporting it. So you might need to lower the resolution to 1080 in step one of GoPro Studio. But it's better if you can export a 4K file so that you have more room to zoom in and create movement. So then just click Export. And once the video is done exporting, you can bring it back in to GoPro Studio, and in step two, you'll be able to add keyframes to it. I hope this keyframes tutorial gives you some inspiration and sparks some ideas to add some creativity to your next video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.